you got to show up if you want to win in life. Remember, as Apollo Creed said to Rocky, there is no tomorrow. I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle rant. Today's topic is going off cycle. I know we hate to hear that. Oh, don't even say that, Dave. I don't want to hear that. I want to talk about it. I don't want to know about it. But you know what? No one wants to know about it, but everyone wants to know about it because no one wants to admit that they have to do it. But when they realize they do have to do it, they want to know how to do it properly. So one of the most frequently asked questions I get is PCT, post-cycle therapy. What do I do? How do I do it? Should I stay off? Should I cruise on Anivar? Should I stay on HRT to bridge my cycles together? The answer, as you know, if you know any of my videos, is invariably no. No bridging, no cruising, no whatever you want to call it. You can make up 10 more names for it. The answer is no. When you're off, you're off. That's it. So let's say you just finished a competition, for instance, or you finished a long mass off-season cycle. You haven't been off in almost a year. You got to clean out. You know it's time and you're saying to yourself, what do I do? Well, let's think about what we're doing. Most bodybuilders that are cycling at a higher level and who are building muscle you know, at a maximum level or dieting for a competition at, you know, at an elite level or even just you know, who take their bodybuilding seriously because there are guys that are at, at a more of a beginner level but they're still using decent amounts of cycles. When they come off, they're worried. Well, first of all, I think the first thing you have to know is the first three weeks that you're off, you're really not off. Because all those long-acting drugs that are in your system are going to stay in there for at least three weeks. So you're going to get a nice rebound. And one of the great things to do is when you're rebounding off a competition is you really can grow. Because what happens is you've restricted your food for so long, eating minimal amounts of food, keeping yourself below sub-maintenance calories. Why? Why? Because you want to burn fat, right? Now all of a sudden you're putting a flood of food in there and there's all this nutrition available now to build muscle. The body now wants to store stuff. It doesn't want to store fat, it wants to build muscle because it was so worried before that it wasn't getting enough nutrition because you were restricting it that now it has this abundance of nutrition and it says, oh my God, I need to store this stuff as muscle in case this guy decides not to feed me again for another six months. And that's really, that's really what causes the anabolic rebound. People don't know. They think, oh, it's some kind of magical you know, thing that happens inside the muscle. No, the body is just goes from starvation mode to now it says store, store everything. And if you do it properly and you don't overeat carbs, so you, you don't overstore carbs as fat, but you eat a lot of protein and you eat a good amount of essential fats, like I recommend, you're going to build a lot of muscle. And it, it's almost impossible not to. The only way you won't do it is if you don't go to the gym. And guess what? A lot of people do that. They say, I'm going to take three weeks off after my show and relax. That's the worst time to take off. Take a couple days off and get back to the gym because you can build muscle now at a much more accelerated rate than you normally would. So you're off all drugs and you're building muscle. Yes, you don't have to stay on drugs to build muscle. You're going to have a three-week rebound that you're going to put on a tremendous amount of muscle. And during that period of, of building muscle, you're going to actually restart your body's natural production. How are you going to do that? Well, first we're going to start the testicles. The testicles are where testosterone is produced. The cells that produce those uh, testosterone molecules are known as the Leydig cells, L-E-Y-D-I-G. The Leydig cells or Leydig cells, they're called sometimes... In order to stimulate those things to turn themselves back on, because right now they're small, right? When you are usually on a cycle, your testicles get to like little peanut size because nothing's being produced down there. Now we want to turn them back on because we want natural production to start again. So we give you an artificial signal to turn those back on. The artificial signal is known as HCG, human chorionic uh, And that hormone or that, that compound, I should say, mimics 
the natural pituitary hormone known as luteinizing hormone, or LH. So LH and HCG are the same thing, essentially, except we're, we're tricking the body into thinking a lot of HC, uh, LH is being produced, and that HCG stimulates those latex cells to produce testosterone in the body. So the testicles start to get bigger, testosterone gets released into the bloodstream, all during this time you're rebounding, plus you still have the other drugs in your system when this is all going on. So we do that for two weeks. We do 2,000 IUs of HCG every third day for five shots. That's gonna take you through two weeks. The next two weeks, we're gonna now turn on the pituitary gland in your brain and the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus sits here, the pituitary here, the hypothalamus tells the pituitary what to do, pituitary tells the testicles what to do. And that's called the hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis, we call that. And that's the feedback loop that happens. And the way that feedback work, loop works is that estrogen shuts down the hypothalamus and prevents it from releasing hormones. We don't want that, okay? So the way we turn the hypothalamus back on is we gotta block estrogen receptors in that hypothalamus. The way we can do that is twofold. We can use Clomid at 50 milligrams per day, or which is an estrogen receptor blocker, or we can use Nulvidex, which is also an estrogen receptor blocker. If you're gonna use Nulvidex, you gotta use 10 milligrams every 12 hours. It's a 12 hour pill. If you use Clomid, it's 50 milligrams per day. And what that does, it sits in that hypothalamus and it blocks those estrogen receptors. When those are blocked, now, because estrogen is what shuts down that hypothalamus, now the hypothalamus will start producing a hormone known as gonadotropic releasing hormone. That hormone's job is to stimulate the pituitary in your brain to start releasing LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Luteinizing hormone, as we mentioned earlier, stimulates the Leydig cells to produce testosterone. The FSH stimulates the Sertoli cells in the testicles to produce sperm. So they both have their independent jobs. We're not so interested in sperm production unless you're gonna do my pregnancy protocol that I give out for free, in which case you wanna get someone pregnant. But if we're just, right now we're just interested in turning on testosterone production. And so we block those estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus, gonadotropic releasing hormones released, LH is released, testicles now getting indirectly stimulated uh, by the, the pituitary gland, whereas before we were kind of directly stimulating with the HCG we're taking. Same effect, now all three of these, or these endocrine organs are turned back on. That takes us through the first four weeks. We still have four weeks to go, because now we have to clean out for four weeks on nothing. So hopefully we turned on enough production in your body that your body can handle the next four weeks. Even if it can't, it doesn't matter, because the lower your testosterone in your body, the better. Did he say that right? I said that right. You know why I said that right? Because I know it doesn't make sense, but, and you're probably saying, why would I want low testosterone? Well, you don't really want low testosterone, but low testosterone is not the worst thing. Because when testosterone is low in the body, the androgen receptors, which are not found on the, on the outside of the muscle cells, they're found inside the muscle cells on the nucleus of the cell. So the nucleus has these receptors on them, they're called nuclear receptors, and they're known as nuclear androgen receptors. So the, the steroidal molecules would go into the cells through the cell membranes, they pass right through because they're fat soluble. They go and they bind to those androgen receptors on the nucleus of the cell and they tell the, the nucleus, start making protein, start making muscle, okay? When you have a lot of steroid in your body, those androgen receptors retract. In other words, the body says, whoa, that's too much. We gotta cut back some of the androgen receptors. We're, over, we're overstimulating our body. That's why the first four weeks, four to six weeks of a cycle, you get your best gains because those androgen receptors are really fresh and they, and they respond very, very you know, severely and very you know, potently. As time progresses, they don't disappear completely, but they downregulate a little bit because that's just the way receptors work. They don't like to be overstimulated. They still work. However, if you've been on a cycle for a year straight, say, those androgen receptors little by little have downregulated, 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 and they're pretty low. So you wanna regenerate those receptors. The only way to do that and I know sometimes you hear these self-proclaimed TikTok gurus saying, more steroids, more testosterone, it, it, it causes more androgen receptors. That's not, it's idiotic. That's not the case, okay? They can quote all the stupid studies that they've done on 90-year-old men. It has nothing to do with, with reality of bodybuilding. Reality of bodybuilding is when you take away testosterone and the androgens and all the, the anabolics you're taking, the body senses that there's a lack of testosterone. It doesn't know that though. It thinks there's a lack of androgen receptors because the body is, the nucleus of these muscle cells are not being stimulated. So it doesn't know there's not enough testosterone. It thinks, oh, we gotta produce more receptors because we're obviously not responding to the drugs that have been there all along. So the body starts cranking out more androgen receptors. And over that next four weeks, you know, that you're on nothing, 
your body is maximizing androgen receptor density. So that when you do go back on at week eight, nine, 10, whenever you decide to go back on, androgen receptors are fully receptive at this point. Your body's detoxed. And when you go back on a cycle, you're gonna respond very, very vigorously. Much greater than if you had not gone off. You stay on HCG, excuse me, if you stay on uh, hormone replacement doses or you bridge with other steroids, you're never gonna get that regeneration of those androgen receptors. They're not gonna come back. You might hold on to a little bit, you might look a little more pumped in that four or eight weeks you're off. Who cares though? It's only, it's a short period, it's an off season. Think about the gains you're gonna make for the next eight months by going off that four to eight, you know, that, that eight week period. You're gonna make tremendous gains. So don't think short term, think long term. Short term sacrifice, long term gains. All great spiritual, physical, intellectual, financial gains that are made in life have always, are always preceded by somewhat of a fall, meaning you have to fall backwards a little bit to rise up higher, okay? And if you can't accept that fact about life, you're never gonna be very successful. It happens. You gotta take a few steps back to jump a leap forward. If you always keep trying to go forward and are afraid to take a step back and, and, and think about what's going on for a second or you know, reformulate the plan, you're gonna fail, it's, it's inevitable. And people who are scared, okay, by doing things the, by the right process will also fail. I hear people complaining, oh, I feel so terrible, I don't have a sex drive, I, don't, I can't eat, I can't go to the gym. Guess what? The off season or the off cycle is what separates the champions from the losers because champions find a way to get it done. Dorian Yates, 97 Olympia, should never have been there. Tore two muscles, lost almost all the blood in his body, had transfusions. He somehow got to that show and won that show. Whether you believe he should have won or not, he won it. It's his sixth Olympia title. He showed up. You gotta show up if you wanna win in life. Remember, as Apollo Creed said to Rocky, there is no tomorrow. You can't put off today what you think you'll do tomorrow, a month from now, a year from now. Do it right now. Now is the time. You don't feel like going to the gym in that morning because you're tired. Get your ass to the gym because that'll be the most important workout of your life. If you feel like, oh, I don't, I don't have the drive. I, shouldn't, I can't go to the, I have a sniffle and I have to stay home in bed. Guess what? The guys that are getting their ass out of bed and going to the gym, those are the guys that are passing you now because you're, you're missing two weeks in the gym because you think you got a cold. Come on. You only should miss the gym if you have a fever. Fevers are, are, are a legitimate reason for staying home. You're not gonna make improvements in, when you have a fever. But don't look for every little excuse to, why you missed your, I have people that send me every single week excuses why they can't hit their mark, why oh, I didn't eat the diet properly, why I didn't get my cardio done, why I couldn't get to the gym, I have a pain in my ass, you know, I have hemorrhoids, I have a sniffle, I have sinus infections, I have, I've heard it all. And then I hear guys that have a lot of shit happen to them and they don't complain. They're like, yeah, this and this and this happened to me, but I got to the gym. This and this and this happened to me. I got every meal in. I worked 24 hours straight, but I didn't miss a single meal. You know, I got my cardio in too, you know, on my lunch hour. Those are the champions. Champions get it done today, not tomorrow. So be smart. Yes, you should do your PCT. Very important, do your HCG, do your clomid. Oh, another thing, I always tell, I always put all my clients on my Testalyze product, because another thing that happens when your body starts producing its own natural testosterone, it can convert a certain percentage of that testosterone into estrogen, and a certain percentage of that testosterone can convert to DHT, or dihydrotestosterone, which is responsible for acne, hair loss, prostate enlargement, all that stuff that we don't really want. So, especially when you're off. It's a good idea to stay on some, a product that will balance your testosterone, meaning keep testosterone as testosterone, optimize it. That's why I call Testalyze a, te a testosterone optimizer. You take three pills twice a day and it, it prevents testosterone from converting into DHT at high levels. A little bit will, but it won't, it, it stops the excessive conversion. So you're keeping more of your natural testosterone as testosterone. It also will bind estrogen up and pull excess estrogen out of the body without bottoming out your estrogen. And it also directly has an effect on optimizing your natural release of testosterone in your body. So 
When people are on that off, that eight week off period or 10 week off period, I have them take Testalyze three pills twice a day all the time. If you're a natural athlete, I would stay on it year round. Once again, there is a science to going off cycle and there is a reason why you're going off cycle because we want to optimize those androgen receptors. We want them to replenish themselves in high numbers. Plus we want to give the body a chance to detoxify itself. You must take a step back, remember, to take 10 steps forward. That's how it works. Listen, I, I made some incredible gains over the course of my career. From 1992 to 1997, okay, was it five years? I gained 100 pounds of muscle. In 97, I decided I wasn't gonna go off that year because I had a lot of guest posing and I stayed on a low dose testosterone for a few months when I normally would have gone off. Biggest mistake. I looked tired in my shows. My, my physique looked tired even though I was hard. I didn't have that pop that was going on and I didn't make any gains that year. So I made 100 pounds of gains for five years and five years prior to that, I made only like one or two pounds of muscle gains. And I think that's another reason why guys are not improving from year to year. They're not going off and giving their body a chance to regenerate those androgen receptors. Remember, there is no tomorrow. Do today what you would put off till tomorrow and you will be a champion too. Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle Rant.